Ink Master has shown some of the industry's best artists and artwork, but there have been artists that made us question, why are they even here? Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel Film Insight. In today's video, we will talk about the worst tattoo artist in Ink Master. While we have a clear idea of who owns the crown of the worst tattoo artist, here's taking a look at some of those who came close to earning this detested title. While we're at it, all you have to do is sit back and relax, for we're going straight into the content. Jeremy Miller Jeremy Miller was a contestant in Season 1 who finished in ninth place. I hate the travel is the next challenge. I haven't done travel in years. I don't like doing travel. While serving in the United States Air Force, Jeremy Miller studied the art of tattooing in Abilene, Texas. He came in specializing in new So School tattoos. In the first elimination round, Jeremy's human canvas wanted her crooked angel wings tattooed on her to be fixed. It started smoothly, but the canvas started crying in pain a few moments later. She tried her best to go on, but tapped out, and the tattoo was left incomplete. As we all know, getting a tattoo on the back can be very painful, and for that very reason, the person needs to be in a comfortable position. But in Jeremy's case, it was the opposite. He didn't put his human canvas in a comfortable position. In fact, the only thing that mattered to him was his comfort. His fellow artists heavily criticized Jeremy, but the judges decided to give him another chance. The artists were given the theme of a tribal tattoo the following week, and Jeremy struggled once again. He even complained and whined about only tattooing new school designs this time. This annoyed not only other artists, but also veteran artists. Jeremy was all about himself. He paid absolutely no heed to anybody else. Not his human canvas, not his fellow artists, and not even the judges. It looked like it was time that the judges had had enough with him, and they finally decided to eliminate Jeremy. This elimination was purely about a lack of skills. So what is Jeremy up to these days, you ask? Jeremy runs his studio in Austin, Texas, called Pigment Tattoo and Laser Removal. Talking about his studio journey, he said no one had ever pushed me harder than a grad school professor. He said it was pointless to work for someone else's shop when I could open my own. Not many of you may know that Jeremy is a perfectionist by nature. Now, there is more than one way to look at this. He can't stand looking at his work because he always ends up finding ways that it could have been better. We may disagree entirely with his approach to defining perfection, but we hope that he has finally found some meaning and value in his skill set. If you thought nobody could surpass Jeremy Miller, then that's where Maddie LaBelle comes into the picture. I know that mine is nothing of what I would regularly tattoo. I'm a little embarrassed. Madison Loftus, aka Maddie LaBelle, was a contestant from Season 3 who finished in 14th place. Maddie LaBelle had been tattooing for over five years when she joined the show. This woman is all about being hot, spicy, and not all that nicey. She struggled to find her feet in the competition and finished in the bottom three in each of the first two episodes. Right from day one, her work was not impressive. First, she did a shoddy cover-up and then another shoddy anatomical heart design. None of them was up to the judges' expectations. However, she managed to scrape through the elimination phase. But how far could her shoddy work take her? Not too far, I guess. Things didn't go in her favor when the judges surprised the competitors with the first ever elimination flash task. A garter belt had to be tattooed by the artists. At the time of judging, judges found Maddie's tattoo the worst, and she was eliminated. Even though she couldn't create a name in the show, she became the only tattoo artist to get eliminated after a flash challenge. Maddie's life after the show was not quite what we thought it would be. In 2015, Maddie was arrested for assault, and this was not her first arrest. She was arrested before as well, for the very same reason. Following the release of the TMZ report in 2015, Maddie defended herself on her Facebook page. She said, just because someone is arrested doesn't imply they are guilty. My most recent charge was dismissed, and I have no convictions on my record. So get off my back, you ignorant high horse. After all the charges died out, she started her journey as a tattoo artist at Corrupted Art Studios in Greensboro, Boston, Carolina. And believe us when we say that the place seems to be doing well. St. Mark Mark Aggie, aka St. Mark, was a contestant in Season 6 who finished in 12th place. I really underestimated what Chris was capable of. The artists are so damn lucky that I did not win the skull pick. He came in Season 7 as a veteran competitor and finished in 12th place again. 
Mark has been tattooing for over 25 years, and in the show he appeared with his apprentice Ryan Hadley. He started off great, but why was he eliminated so early? That's because he became cocky and overconfident. At the show's beginning, he seemed to be a promising guy as he won the first three head-to-head -head elimination tattoos. Not long after his winning, his ego soared high and he began to sour on his fellow artists and fans. His ego was so high that he went too far by calling himself the Tattoo God. However, the so-called Tattoo God couldn't stay in the chapel for long. During the time of the face-off tattoo, St. Mark was eliminated. As he moved away from utilizing liners and instead tattooed using shaders, it became clear that he lacked detail, color, and line work. St. Mark returned to the show the following season, including eight new artists competing against eight veteran artists. He got to call out the style and subject matter in his first episode as the veteran, and he picked the seven deadly sins using just shaders. St. Mark ended up at the bottom, and he remained a target for the rest of the way, giving the new artists a final laugh. In week five, he was the first veteran artist to be sent home following a disastrous new school design. Fans of the show remember him as a big egomaniac who just knew how to run his mouth. So we're finally here for the greatest reveal of all. We've zeroed in on the worst ever artist to take part in the Ink Master. You are sure to dislike this guy instantly, and we bet some of you already know who it is. We're talking about Mystical Mike. Mystical Mike was a contestant from Season 3 who finished in 15th place. I consider myself a philosopher of the needle. I have a creative imagination, but my technical skill limits me to my production value. At that time, it was revealed that he had been doing tattooing for the past eight years. Mike is known for his detailed illustrations and drawing much of his inspiration from comic book superheroes. Mike, a self-described academic with a passion for sarcasm, claims that he strives for quality in his work, providing each customer with his distinct version. However, this is what he says, and we don't believe a word of it. During the introduction round, he boasted a lot about his tattooing, but will that change his life? Honestly, he sounded more like an overconfident, self-centered, and self-centric jerk. Although he named himself mystical, he did nothing of that kind. He was, in fact, not mystical, but a mistake on the show, and we can see this right from the day he set foot. In the first Flash challenge, the artists were challenged with tattooing single-needle tattoos on former jail prisoners. Despite all the boasting he did, Mike's first performance was poor, and the judges also criticized him for his hideous pocket watch design. After the elimination tattoo, he had to perform a cover-up tattoo on the same canvas. He got the job done. However, his monotone blue lion design lacked detail and powerful lines. As if the disastrous tattoo was not enough to shock the judges, he surprised them more by announcing that he only brought one tattoo machine for the competition. Despite his incredible performance and announcement, Mike made it through the first week. After the unfavorable week, although we all hoped for some improvement in Mike, he showed nothing. In the second week, Mike had already established himself as the house's weakest artist, and the other artists also didn't like him because of his attitude and behavior. There was an incident where the human canvas and Mike were having a conversation, and he made her feel very uncomfortable. He said tattooers are selfish, and that's precisely why he's here, and the artist she got tattooed wasn't. The same human canvas told the judges that Mike and his work were awful. There seemed to be a lot of issues with this guy. It wasn't only his behavior, it was also his technique. There was a time when Mike used a liner needle instead of a shading needle during the healing process. Can you believe that? And because of this stupidity, the canvas had to bear the worst kind of pain that she had ever had. It wasn't the pain alone, but all the colors were gone too, and the tattoo looked awful. She even confessed that if there was a way of not getting into any trouble, then she would have certainly punched him. So here's what we think was the issue. It was the way he communicated, and sadly, he had no plans of changing it. When the canvas had had enough of him, Mike tried to blame her. What a jackass. However, the lady did not take any of his nonsense. She kicked him out of the room. I think he truly deserved every bit of it. Anyway, this attitude couldn't take him further in the competition, and he was permanently kicked out of Ink Master in the second week of eliminations. But looks like he wasn't done yet. Mike returned in many spin-offs, but he was still the same. He was the worst of the worst artists that the show ever had. A jackass. Post Ink Master, he worked as a tattoo artist at Dragon Tattoo in the Bronx, New York, but he quit. 
So what's he up to these days? We're not sure. Mike believes he can boost industry standards. We won't mind if you want to pay a visit, but let us know how it went. By the way, did any of you get some work done by him? How was the experience? Let us know in the comments section. With all these years of tattooing, there is still room for improvement. It's not just us who say that. Many have commented on his Facebook page about his tattoos too. Take the example of these drawings. We don't think any anime fans would want that inked on their body, would you though? If Itachi was real, he would have surely put him under Genjutsu and let's not think what Goku and Nozuku would have done. After a few scattered reviews are positive, I think we've already had enough of this guy and are better off without him. Any day, any time. So, who, according to you, was the worst ink master of them all? Let us know in the comments below. That'll be all for today's video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to drop us a huge like and share. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this, and hit the bell icon for more instant access to our content. Thanks for watching, guys. Till next time.